Welcome to the Bosman Viewing. Today we're going to be looking at another obscure player. But before we get started, let's remind ourselves about what this guy could do. A player with a goal scoring record that still holds up today. It is Brazilian striker Mario Yardel. As previously mentioned, Yardel was born and raised in Brazil, in the northeast of the country in the city of Fortaleza. The region is known for its beaches and lagoons, and like most kids in the area, Yardel grew up honing his football skills on these beaches. Then he got his big break after being spotted and snapped up by a Brazilian side, Vasco da Gama. With Vasco being one of the biggest and most popular teams in Brazil, it was always going to be difficult for a young Yardel to break into the first team at that time. He managed to make a handful of appearances during his formative years before opting to go out on loan for more game time and he chose to join Grêmio. Since Grêmio were in essence a rival Brazilian club to Vasco, he almost went ahead with this loan move with a point to prove. And prove a point he did. He immediately jumped into that first team and never looked back. He was able to rack up almost a goal a game during his time at Grêmio, and he most famously played a major part in Grêmio winning a historic Copa Libertadores. During his loan spell, thanks to his goals and performances, he was now attracting interest from major teams in Europe. And he decided to fly over and meet one of these clubs. It was Glasgow Rangers. He decided to join them, but unfortunately due to strict British rules involving non-EU players at that time, the move fell through, at which point he opted to join another major club that was interested in him, and that was Porto. Being one of the three top teams in Portugal with a consistently sold out stadium, this would prove to be a great move for Yardel. He adapted to the league instantly and seemingly couldn't stop scoring, quickly establishing himself as arguably the best player in the squad or at the very least the most important, with his goals propelling the team to the top of the league. It didn't take long for him to become a fan favourite at Porto. It also wasn't just in Portugal that Yardel was doing the business, as any time they played in Europe, he was competing against the best in world football and he was holding his own. He even gained the reputation as being a player's player, where even if he wasn't grabbing major media attention, the pros who played with and against him knew how good he was. One of his greatest career achievements was winning multiple golden boots for being a top goalscorer in Europe with Porto. Considering the calibre of strikers around him at that time, this was no easy feat. Along with the personal honours, he was also very successful with his club, winning multiple leagues and domestic cups during his time at Porto. But as is always the case, every player has a price, and one team met that asking price and activated his release clause, and this is when he signed for Galatasaray. A massive club in Turkey with a world-renowned, passionate fan base. If Yardel was nervous upon signing for the team, he didn't let it show. He couldn't have had a better debut, scoring five goals in his first league game. He would also go on to score many important goals in Europe for Galatasaray, bringing some much-needed guile and flair up front that the side had been lacking for some time. His crowning moment in Turkey would be helping his team win the UEFA Super Cup by scoring two goals against Real Madrid to win the cup the first in the club's history. However, as much as the fans loved him, due to some injuries and ongoing personal problems, his time at Galatasaray would be cut short after one season, and he made a surprising move back to Portugal to sign for Sporting Lisbon. A league that had brought him huge success previously, the only questions being asked were if he could repeat that success and win over the Sporting fans. And just like he always had, Yardel did his talking on the pitch and did what he did best, which was put the ball in the back of the net. His first season back in Portugal with Sporting would be seen as one of his best, scoring an unbelievable 42 goals in 30 league games for the club, helping them to win the league and be crowned Footballer of the Year. 
It also must be noted that at this time he was also mentoring a young player by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo, who he helped during the early parts of his career with Sporting. So as much as his first season was fantastic, the following year would be seen as a sharp decline. Fitness issues plagued his time, including an unfortunate knee injury sustained in a swimming pool which caused his form to dramatically dip. These issues were part of the reason Sporting opted to sell Yardell for a cut price deal to then Premier League side Bolton Wanderers. Bolton at this time were trying to become an established side in England's top division by signing highly regarded internationals from around Europe and Yardell was part of this transfer plan. This move however did not work out as he struggled to adapt and was unable to register a single league goal. He did however manage to score three goals in the League Cup when called upon, including a famous header against Liverpool at Anfield. During the winter break, Bolton allowed Jardel to leave on loan to regain fitness and try to recapture some form, and he joined Italian side Ancona. Unfortunately, fitness issues continued to be in place and he was unable to score a goal during that short loan spell in Italy. Due to his performances, rather than return to Bolton, the club opted to cut their losses and release Yardell on a free transfer, and this allowed him to sign for Argentinian side Noel's Old Boys. This was seen as a big opportunity for Yardell to return to South America and recapture the form he had shown in his youth, but it wasn't to be. Even though he did grab a handful of goals for the club, they opted to also release him. This would begin a stage of his career as a journeyman going from club to club for brief stints. One notable spell was with Australian side Newcastle Jets, when he was signed as their marquee player. Yardale worked hard to regain fitness upon arriving, but was mostly used as an impact sub during that time. From here, he would play out the rest of his club career playing for the lower league teams in Brazil, Bulgaria, Cyprus and Argentina before finally calling time in his career and retiring in 2011. Now for Yardale's international career. It had a very promising start as he was a big part of the Brazil youth setup that won the Under-20 World Cup in 1993. He would eventually be called up to the senior setup later in his career, but spacing that team was always going to be difficult. As great of a player Yardale was and his unbelievable goal scoring record, the issue was who he was competing with at international level. During his peak years, just to mention a few, he has the likes of Bebero, Rivaldo, Ronaldo and Ronaldinho in front of him to play in the system Brazil used at that time. Due to these reasons, he was not able to earn as many international caps as you'd expect from a player with his goal scoring record. However, he did manage a respectable 10 caps and one goal for his country. As for what Yardel was doing now, he made the unorthodox decision to move from football to politics and in 2014 he was elected to the Chamber of Deputies on the Brazilian Social Democratic Party. It is unclear whether Yardel will be staying in politics for the long haul, however should he decide to get back involved in football in some capacity, there's no doubt that he'll be welcomed back with open arms. We hope you enjoyed the video, this is the Bosman viewing, if you're new here you should check out our other videos and content, and if you did enjoy this one, if you could thumbs it up, that'd be great, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.